Hey guys, I'm back with another uh, challenge again today. Today against uh, Denjan555. And we are playing with white. Um, what would I like to do? Right, so let's say good luck, have fun. Do I want to go for d4 or e4? Um, I'm going to go for d4. So he plays knight f6. Um, I'm wondering if it, this is going to be a Grunfeld or a King's Indian. Looks like it could well be more of a Grunfeld. If I want to do that. Well, I don't know the Grunfeld well enough, honestly. Um, so really, the, um, the best move here I know is e4. Uh, e3 is an inaccuracy. E4 is definitely the best. Uh, and then after that, they play d5. Um, no, hold on a minute. Let me figure this out. This would be a King's Indian, actually. Uh, the move order is different for a Grunfeld. Okay, so it's the King's Indian, so e4 is the best move here. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is the usual move. Um, and then uh, after he plays e5, we will push past. Um, do I want to play knight f3 or what? I always seem to have trouble with the sameish variation. I don't know very much about it though, unfortunately. Um, I think I'll just develop knight f3. Seems like a reasonable move. I'm finding it hard to believe that it can um, be that bad, really. Oh, uh, may it? No, hang on, he couldn't have done that. My knight's defending that. Okay, maybe bishop there for a little bit of defence. Defends these points. Uh, after this, we're going to push past because that's the top move. You should not take, you should uh, push past if you're put in that situation. Yeah, I like the King's Indian. It's a, it's a good opening. Uh, one thing um, is that I was I was just thinking about like ideas like um, pushing this pawn up. Right, so we're gonna push past there, like I said. So white gets a little bit of uh, extra space, and black at the moment has a rather unhappy bishop. Uh, it's uh, it's not able to uh, really show its true power yet. So. I'm surprised by that move, just uh, expanding on the queen's side. Um, he may be thinking that I may be considering casting queen side, which, to be fair to him, I was briefly. Uh, because uh, when I mentioned this, um, obviously if I was going to pawn storm my opponent, that would strongly imply that I'm either going to keep my king in the centre or I'm going to go queen side. God, I'm cold. Mm. I'm going to put my jumper. It's freezing. Right. <clears throat> That's a good question. Do I want to actually... Um, do I want to go straight for a pawn storm or do I want to go for a more... 
classical approach and just cast off inside and uh, just see how it goes. At some point, um, he may want to play f5 because that's a very key move in the King's Indian. So we could go bishop there and then push. If I go bishop there though, he's probably going to play h6. It's something that a lot of people do to me though, and I do play h6. And then they back the bishop off usually to there or there. Uh, then it's usually king h7. And uh, they look to move this knight out of the way and uh, f5, which then favours black. So one of the biggest uh, challenges that people that are playing the white end of the King's Indian face is to make sure that f5 doesn't uh, ever get played under favourable circumstances for um, under favourable circumstances for black. Am I feeling aggressive today? Do I want to push that? I think the idea of doing that is quite interesting. Should I go for it? Decisions, decisions. You only live once. Let's go for it. Let's have a bit of fun. So, although I like playing this opening, uh, one of the um, major disadvantages uh, of this pawn structure is the potential for a kingside pawn storm like this. <clears throat> because uh, you can um, meet their structure and uh, cause significant weaknesses uh, before they can meet your structure if I was to castle queenside, which at the moment I'm most likely not going to. I, I may not castle at all. I may just keep my king hanging around in the center, but this is a quite closed pawn structure at the moment, so uh, I don't so, uh, I think it's definitely possible for me to be able to get away with uh, uh, my king loitering around in the centre. So here I'm not sure, maybe you may want to play h6. Uh, that would mean that I couldn't play this because he would just push past. Of course, uh, if I was to play, if he was to play some other move like knight there, and I pushed there, um, actually there he could just take that. So I, I may want to get my bishop onto this diagonal first, and um, or even just uh, actually get my knight over as well. That that's an idea. That is an idea. Ah, okay, so he could be threatening to get his knight into that square. Could be. Probably is. Threatening that. He 
we could play bishop there if we want to. Um, or we could get uh, a knight over to try and help out with um, arranging some kind of an attack against the enemy king. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do that. So those two squares will be covered by a knight on g3, <clears throat> as well as a, a bit of extra defense on that. If he was to play knight there and uh, choose to take my bishop, uh, I'm fine with him doing that, because this bishop at the moment uh, it's plain to see that it's um, it's not the best piece in the world. Uh, at the moment, he's just uh, staring at two of my own pawns, and it's just it's not a very productive piece at all. It's not doing that much. I mean, it it is true that the bishop is um, sort of like X-raying the f5 square, so. Um, he's half helping with um, prevent, uh, the prevention of that move, but <clears throat> uh, a queen would do that job as well. So maybe not, uh, maybe not as well as the bishop because the queen has greater value. But but either way, I think this should be. Um, Reasonable. So after I get a knight over to the g3 square, this is going to be uh, coming um, coming in pretty quickly. So knight there, uh, so wait, hold on, if knight there, knight into g3, if knight takes, queen takes, uh, let's say knight away to that, that, uh, that square maybe, but then we could take it and damage the pawn structure a bit, opening up his, uh, his king in the process, which he wouldn't be happy about. Okay, so he he has played uh, knight into c5. Let's see if he wants to capture. Yeah, so in a King's Indian game, uh, a lot of the um, the play is going to revolve around the king side. So, I definitely think it is a, a good idea for me to have transferred this knight over to the uh, the g3 square from the c3 square. I think uh, in the long term, that decision is going to have a much... Um, I think that decision is going to prove itself as being okay. The um, the knight's going to have a much better, much more active future over on the king side than it will on the queen side. I mean, for one, it's it's already assisting in um in helping me uh, soften up the uh, the king's uh, position at the moment. So Uh, I'd love to get an open H file here, uh, that would be brilliant. Uh, one very common idea in the uh, King's Indian is to have set up a, um, 
a dark square bishop and queen battery along uh, this diagonal uh, with the intention of getting a bishop there to trade off the um, the legendary King's Indian dark squared bishop uh, dark, dark squared bishop sorry all right what's this uh, queen trying to do maybe come into that square so if I was to play pawn push Hmm. Let me think about this for a minute. If I was to push, uh, he goes queen there. Queen takes queen. Knight takes bishop with check. Bishop there, and we drop e4. Bishop there now. Um, maybe an idea. It may be an idea. Because then the queen's not coming to that square to trade off for my queen. Uh, of course, if he does then play queen takes, we would have to take it back with the pawn here. Again, I think that should be reasonable. Um, oh no, hang on. No, I don't like that. No, hang on. Sorry, I was just uh, misvisualizing that position. I think that should be okay. Well, at least now we're not going to see the um the queen swooping into g4, causing me problems. Sleepless nights and all that stuff. Uh, I do not want to give this knight a um, a check move to be able to win my dark squared bishop. I definitely don't want to give it that. <clears throat> so at some point I may want to look into just uh, developing this bishop as well. Uh, get the bishop out of harm's way. But um, I don't think I will... Um, be castling queen side. I think I'd rather just keep the king in the center. Uh, hopefully, have an open h file for my um, my h uh, h1 rook. Okay, so that. Uh, I could do that. I think I want to wait for him to push to there and then allow me to push past. So where would I like to put the bishop? I'm thinking one of those two squares. Uh, the problem with g5 is that it will uh, provoke h6, which I don't really want. So I'm more seriously considering the move uh, e3 as a square. Only serious problem with that is that I then have to be half concerned about the potential for my Queen getting trapped, which I have to say I'm not I'm not a fan of that. If I was to just push there right now, what happens? I mean we're coming in 
uh, with an attack faster, right? If pushed, then we can just take that pawn. YOLO. Obviously, if uh, if knight takes pawn, knight takes pawn, pawn takes, um, queen takes, threatens checkmate, <clears throat> and it um basically these bishops, as well as the uh, the queen over here, the rook. Uh, along the H file and the knight here, uh, there is a lot of firepower coming straight in towards his king. So he has to be a little bit careful. Uh, if the position uh, position opens up too much over on this side of the board, that could be um pretty bad, right? So I think I should just um try and open up the uh, the position. This square maybe? Which one? Where would I like my pieces to be? Oh, we could go queen there. Except that it allows knight takes pawn, knight takes, knight takes. <clears throat> that doesn't make me very happy. Another thing that doesn't make me happy is that the um. Uh, the queen is becoming active down the C file. Uh, I think I should go there. I suppose if he was to take, uh, I would still be taking there, so... Uh, or would I take back like that? Uh, to allow the light squared bishop uh, access to a new diagonal, which could even be better than its current diagonal. No, I, I can't allow him to be able to push um, e4 himself. <clears throat> so I will have to take back with um, this pawn if he chooses to take which he may choose to do. Unfortunately, I've used a lot of time. I don't know what move number we're on at the moment because uh, I'm still using Zen mode at the moment. Zen mode, if you don't know how to do that, that's... um. Uh, if you go up to the top part here where your name is, uh, it's going to be under your preferences. 
and uh, I think it may be under game display or game behavior, something like that. Uh, if you look in there, uh, you'll be able to find a setting called Zen Mode, which will allow you to do this if you want. Yeah, it'll allow you to focus a little bit more on your um, on your play with uh, less distractions. Uh, I may also, uh, I may even go with F3 at some point. Which I don't really want to do, but um, it is played in the um, in the sameish variation. It keeps the knight out of g4. F5 is clearly no longer an issue. It's uh, it's not going to be an issue ever again because it's uh, it's no longer a possible move uh, from the uh, from the black side. Unfortunately, um, I don't believe uh, any rook sacrifices like that are, are actually working for me. I'd love it if it did, but I don't think it does. Okay, so here I'm thinking of, uh, of f3, and if he throws in queen check, I'm just going to play bishop there. We've equalised a little bit on the clock. So we're both around four minutes left. So at least I'm not significantly down on time. Um, I may be down a bit lower than uh, the average of where I might like to be at this point in time, but uh, at least we're both uh, a little bit lower on time in this game. So. Uh, these bishops are quite good um, defensive pieces as well, which is uh, which is quite good. So <clears throat> with this uh, this structure, they're able to because uh, I've got both coloured bishops, uh, I can make sure that um, my bishops are constantly defending the weak points in this pawn structure, which uh, which is a, a bonus. It's a plus. I would like to get my um my queen out of the way of my bishop. Uh, I'd like to rearrange my pieces actually. I would like to get my bishop in front of my queen. My queen somewhere back here. <clears throat> so queen there. Queen, uh, uh, bishop there, sorry. Okay, that's fine. I I'm okay with them. Um, with that, I think. So here I could go for this move. Unfortunately, it basically guarantees that my v-pawn is going to be weak for the rest of the game. I suppose we could go for that, and then if um, 
if knight jumps in, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, and win a pawn. So, what are we going to do here? We could go for a3, stop this pawn and it tracks. I think that's what uh, we've got to do, really. We might like the um, bishop to be on this diagonal. So it's, a, it's a very closed position at the moment. Unfortunately, neither side has a very serious advantage at the moment, and we've reached the blitz portion of the game. <clears throat> We're both uh, in the region of three minutes or less. I could be looking to try and open the position in the near future. You may be looking how to try and get the sea pawn. Um, don't know, I'm deciding where I want my queen to be. Just trying to figure this uh, this out, really. Okay. I think I'm going to get uh, bishop there and um, finally get this uh, this dark square bishop queen battering ram going. I'm like a uh, twenty something moves late. I uh, assume we're in the twenties, maybe thirties at the moment. So bishop there, right? I don't see his threat at the moment, actually, so... So I'm just going to do this. Uh, you shouldn't really play a move without understanding what your opponent's threat is, but the position is quite closed at the moment, and I don't see a very clear way for him to be able to uh, invade, perhaps that. Maybe he's got ideas like that. Uh, if that was the case, we could always go for this idea. Mm, maybe not. <clears throat> maybe he's just looking to try and get the queens off, because uh, with the queens off in this position, um, it's almost definitely a draw. Maybe that's what he's going for. Uh, because he's uh, he's running a bit low on time, so am I. Uh, he may be looking to just try and simplify the position a little bit, and uh, then once the position is simplified, it will hopefully be uh, much easier for both sides to play. Okay. Bishop there. Wait, no. No, no. We will take the rook. Yeah, the problem with uh, taking with the queen there, although it uh, seems to be nice, uh, comes with some nice threats against the um, the h7 pawn. Uh, it would have also dropped the uh, the b pawn, which is unfortunate. Um, I think here I should maybe uh, consider just getting a rook there. A rook there to defend this pawn, so my queen is less. Um, less necessary to defend it. Maybe just take the bishop. I'm taking the bishop. Yeah, so... We're going to defend this b-pawn. 
we may look to do some crazy ideas like that. I don't know yet. I honestly don't know. He is down below a minute on time. So, yep. Um, here, what about bishop there? Queen there. Um, all right, let's just uh, do it. See what he wants to do with that queen. Oh, hang on, that drops. Uh, that drops the a pawn, right? No, it doesn't. That's clever. Right, so here I'm going to play this move. And then I'm threatening to take the A-pawn. Okay. Oh, um, right. Nasty tricks he's trying to pull, pull at the moment, I have to say. Trying to trick me in the uh, in the blitz section of the game, and it nearly worked actually. Uh, it still might at some later point, but I don't know. <clears throat> um, do I want a castle? I don't think I do. I think I just want to step up with my king a little bit. Uh, finally, I'm connecting uh, these rooks together. Right, we'll give him doubled pawns. He doesn't have a way of defending that, or uh, except that he does. Okay. Um, knights, tricky, tricky knights. I may want to get the bishop back there again, believe it or not. Right, okay. So his plan is sim uh, is simple. He's uh, he's just going to double his uh, his rooks. Uh, we could go for push, takes, rook takes. Um, if I push again, he's got takes, 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 book takes. Okay, we've just got doubled pawns there. Uh, I have to say this isn't looking good for me at the moment. Not at all. Not at all. King there, king there, and try to get the king over, maybe. Yeah, okay. I, I don't have anything here, um, really, so... Uh, if anything, I think I've, uh, I've lost, really, because I can't... Uh, I can't defend against this idea. Uh, of winning the A pawn. OK. 
okay so right I just don't know what to do here really I haven't got a clue let's go after that oh that drops that pawn I'm close to resigning here this is just um, not going well Oh, I'm an idiot. Am I? I think I'm an idiot. Unfortunately, the game has uh, come down to a time scramble, which is not what I would have wanted. Uh, I'd have preferred one of us to gain a, um, a big advantage um, in the opening or something. Yeah, and I can't take that because I will lose my, my rook afterwards. Um, I think I should just resign that, actually. I, I don't have anything. Yeah. Good game, thank you. Really unfortunate how the game uh, ended up uh, coming down to a time scramble. Oh, let's see uh, what the tale of the tape is, so to speak. Uh, a lot of things would have been missed, I can promise you that, uh, in that end game, or just in that game in general. A lot of things would have been missed. I think that's, uh, that's finished evaluating it now. So it was a 38 move game uh, until I resigned. Um, overall, it was actually played reasonably well. Um, not that many mistakes, well, and definitely no blunders either, apparently. Okay, so uh, the final count is eight inaccuracies, two mistakes, zero blunders by me for a 30 average centipon loss. And my opponent, uh, Dan 555, five, five, uh, five inaccuracies, one mistake, zero blunders for a 23 average centipon loss. So, not a lot was, uh, was given by either side. Uh, it seemed to agree with my, um, my plan here, the whole general idea. Unfortunately, takes was not the best way of... Um, breaking up in the position. Best was bishop g5. And why is that? So if he does uh, if he does that, then what? Uh, I just want to have a, a clear idea of um what what the um winning idea would have been. See, I would have never castled in this position. I mean, okay, m maybe after after this point here, 
but uh, certainly not um, while the porn was still mobile and still having an influence. I was more interested in just uh, getting the position open. I wanted to have, uh, to have an open H file. Okay, so Queen there was the move. I did mention that. Uh, here it was plus 1.5. It's in White's favour. Okay, Bishop H6 was not the move. Yeah, okay, so uh, I did think afterwards uh, rook a1 to defend this pawn. I'd have played a move like that. Um, but yeah, after after King there, that that was um, was that the mistake? Bishop D one was the mistake. Uh, one more in time for sure a bit. Knight takes knight was best actually. I thought knight takes knight, bishop takes rook check, bishop there is fine. Um, yeah, so the mistake was made under time pressure. Up until that point, it was only uh, inaccuracies by each side. Shem wasn't able to actually open up the position the way I wanted to to get at, get at the enemy king. It was just a little bit too well defended. It's really unfortunate. Okay, so if you want to play a game against me for the channel, just uh, send me a message here on Natures or um, comment on, on one of my YouTube videos. Either way is a good way to get in touch with me. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Oh, uh, I'll see you next time. All right, bye, guys.